Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Testing the tests. Amid worries about accuracy, the FDA takes new steps when it comes to antibody testing. Problematic party, a well-known Detroit comedian says he was trying to do a good deed, throwing this huge party for his child's birthday. And breaking right now, U.S. Representative Paul Mitchell has just filed a lawsuit against Governor Gretchen Whitmer, saying she overstepped her authority with her stay-at-home order. Meantime, with a battle to reopen the state raging, Governor Whitmer says not yet, as cases in the western part of the state and the rural parts of Michigan are starting to see a spike. Good to have you with us on this Monday afternoon. We normally would bring you today's latest numbers on the coronavirus, but the state did not release them today. A glitch in the reporting system kept those numbers from being released, and we'll let you know when they are updated. We want to start, though, with Governor Gretchen Whitmer a short time ago warning. We are far from reopening the state. Let's go ahead and get to Rod Maloney with what the governor had to say. Rod, she's somewhat tempering expectations amid an outcry to get back to work. Right. Well, she is staying the course and saying this is going to be a very slow and steady reopening. She has been saying that all along, including when she uh, extended her stay at home order just last week. But that is a real problem. And the Republican legislature has been talking about suing her in state court. But just a few minutes ago, Congressman Paul Mitchell, who is not up for reelection, has decided to jump the line. He's not waiting for a state court. He went right to federal court to try and change the governor's what he believes power grab. We're not out of the woods yet. We're still seeing a rapid increase in cases on the west side of the state and in rural areas up north. If we re-engage too soon or too quickly, we run the risk of a second wave of COVID-19. But that's what caused the ongoing power struggle with the legislature in the first place. We're getting conflicting word from Lansing as to when a lawsuit against the governor's unilateral stay-at-home order is going to get filed. House Republican sources say it could be Wednesday. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky said in a radio interview this morning it's going to come next week. We do know Republicans will file in the Michigan Court of Claims, and there's little expectation a judge would end the state of emergency overnight. It's likely it's going to end up appealed. In that interview on the Your Defending Fathers radio show in Sheboygan, Shirky said that he would support a petition effort to repeal the 1945 law the governor used to extend her order. I think it's probably the number one priority right now is to do that based on a, a citizen petition initiative drive uh, that allows true representative government and self-government to take over. I am happy to work with the legislature. I think ideally we all get on the same page here. But what I can't do is negotiate like this is a political issue. Well, negotiations or not, here, are, here is where we are. Paul Mitchell is going to a federal judge looking for an immediate emergency response to this. We'll have to see when and if that gets taken up. In the meantime, Shirky is talking about something infinitely more drastic, which is a petition that would actually take the 1944 law and repeal it. In other words, it would go to the legislature and would not need the governor's signature in order to take place. Now, that could take a while, but that's what they're aiming for at this point. So this is going to be a very contentious issue in the weeks to come. Back Definitely, to indeed, and it'll take a while, as you said. But, Ron, try to help me understand, what would it take for the process itself to succeed? Well, it's going to mean about 350,000 signatures. It's going to need a petition. And when you're in a stay at home order in a lockdown, it's going to be hard to find people mm -hmm. uh, who will go out and perhaps sign a, uh, a petition. That means getting close to somebody, putting your name down on a paper. And then, of course, that has to be approved by, uh, by somebody in Lansing uh, in the Secretary of State's office to make sure that the signature is good. They would probably need 500,000 to 750,000 to ensure that they had the 350,000 they need. So this is not an easy thing, but the, uh, the Senate Minority Leader is obviously angling for that and wants it as soon as possible. Yeah, quite a process. We'll see what happens. All right, Rod, thanks. Well, the FDA doing an about face, announcing it will begin cracking down on the sale of antibody tests after allowing a flood of unauthorized and potentially inaccurate tests. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here tonight to explain what's changing and the impact it could have on our ability to track the coronavirus. This has frankly been a mess with some 200 antibody tests on the market that were not required to submit any sort of proof to the FDA that they actually worked. 
After facing intense criticism, the FDA is now acting to rein in those unproven or even fraudulent tests. The FDA will now require test makers to seek emergency use authorization and provide their data within 10 business days. This reverses a policy the FDA instituted in March, which loosened approval standards to the extreme. That created widespread confusion and warnings about the inaccuracy of such tests. So far, 12 tests have been granted emergency use authorization by the FDA, the latest including the test from Swiss drug maker Roche. Their CEO says their test was validated with more than 5,000 blood samples and was incredibly accurate. It's almost near perfect accuracy with a sensitivity of 100%, the specificity of 99.8%. So this is pretty extraordinary. But he cautions, having antibodies is no guarantee you are protected. So I do think it is valuable information, but we should not fully rely on it. In other words, even if you know that you have been infected, it is important to keep social distance. It is important, uh, uh, you know, to wash your hands. With reliable tests, broad antibody testing could provide a better sense of how much of the population has already been infected with coronavirus and if they can get sick again. We can now track people who have been uh, infected and have recovered and see whether they get reinfected um, in, in the future, which will then be the proof of whether we get immune uh, or not. The bottom line, there are still some 200 unauthorized tests out there, so before you even consider getting one, make sure it at least has that emergency use authorization. Now, we've put that list on the health page at clickondetroit.com. Back to you. All right, thank you, Doc. And Roche says it plans to produce millions of its test kits this month. It has already begun shipping some of them. At his daily briefing, Mayor Mike Duggan announced that 25,000 tests have been done for COVID-19. Also today, the mayor stressed the number of coronavirus cases at nursing homes continues to be a problem. And I can tell you the last 10 death reports we've had, nine of them have been over the age of 70. This is more and more becoming a killer uh, of our elderly. And so Ms. Fair and her team are now uh, working through the assisted living facilities, the uh, adult foster care facilities, and I've asked her before the week's over to have a plan to go through every senior citizen apartment building uh, in this city. If we can stop the spread of COVID-19 in our elderly communities and stop it in our workplaces, we can flat out beat this. So far, there are 248 deaths in nursing homes alone in the city of Detroit. And as the number of cases in the city of Detroit is declining, there was a real symbol of hope today. For the first time since the shutdown, city workers were back on the job, making sure the grass gets cut and those potholes get filled. Grant Herms is live tonight. Grant, they're back at work with some major precautions. That is exactly right. Some 200 furloughed workers for the city are back on the job today. And while they say they're happy about being back at work, they are taking some serious precautions to stay safe and socially distant. A familiar sign of spring. Crews back mowing the fields, cleaning the sidewalks, and sweeping the streets. Hundreds of Detroit City workers were allowed back on the job today after Governor Whitmer reopened outdoor work. But crews are being forced to stay socially distant, even in a job where much of the day is spent alone. They have their temperatures tested each morning using forehead thermometers. Each worker is required to fill out a symptom questionnaire and must have it approved before being assigned to a part of the city. It feels great. Um, I know the employers are happy. They've been uh, chopping at the bit to get back. Um, they've been excited to work and uh, getting back to provide in service to the residents in the city. After that, they wear masks and are only allowed three people to a truck between parks, the riskiest part of the day. Mary Ellen Clark walks around Peterson Park on Detroit's west side every day. She and her two friends were happy to see crews out. The nice part about it is just about every year, they cut the grass at this time right before Mother's Day. So when the people come out to celebrate, they have a beautiful park to do it in. Now, crews are hoping to get five to eight parks done each day. There's a, supposed to be a list up on the city's website very soon about when, which park will be mowed. And hopefully parks like where we are on the east side, you can see that can't come too soon. Kimberly? 
President Trump is acknowledging the U.S. death toll from coronavirus may hit 100,000. That's much higher than the 60,000 he warned about just two weeks ago. It comes as the president is pressing states to reopen and stepping up criticism of China for its handling of the original virus outbreak. Alice Barr is in Washington tonight, where major institutions are finding new ways to get back to work. Kimberly, the Senate and the Supreme Court are both getting back to business today, though it's hardly business as usual. With Washington still under a stay-at-home order, senators are back to work today in a Capitol building bearing new markers to show safe distancing. There are 30 million Americans out of work right now in America. They likely going to need additional help, and I just think it's important for the Senate to be here. But there is no new coronavirus legislation on the agenda yet. Instead, senators focused on confirming Trump administration nominees and judges. This, as the highest court in the land, takes the historic step of hearing arguments today by conference call. God save the United States and this honorable court. As Washington institutions adjust to pandemic life, President Trump acknowledging there will be more death. In a Fox News virtual town hall from the Lincoln Memorial, the president saying the coronavirus death toll could hit 100,000, much higher than his past predictions. That's a horrible thing. We shouldn't lose one person over this. The New York Times reporting today the CDC is privately projecting cases will steadily climb, anticipating 3,000 deaths a day by June, nearly double the current level. The White House is downplaying those projections. President Trump also getting ahead of most medical experts, predicting a vaccine will be ready by the end of the year. The doctors would say, well, you shouldn't say that. I'll say what I think. And the Trump administration is stepping up its accusations against China as a new U.S. intelligence document obtained by NBC News shows that country was stockpiling crucial medical supplies, even as it minimized the true extent of the outbreak. President Trump is getting back on the road tomorrow. He's set to tour a plant in Phoenix that makes N95 masks. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, and we're off and running on a chilly Monday. Hey there, Ben. Kim and Karen, how are you? You know, temperatures below average was one thing, but having multiple record lows in jeopardy this week, that's a whole nother kettle of fish, and we'll look at it next. The COVID-19 pandemic really affecting the city of Flint, a city that was already struggling from the water crisis. We'll take you to Flint coming up in my Help Me Hank report. A huge birthday party on the east side is looked down upon by doctors. We'll show you why coming right up.